What's up, y'all? Welcome into the Let Me Tell You Something show with Nate and Zay. Zay, Zaya, whatever you want to go with. <laughs> All right, you guys, and we are here on the one and only Dub Network. You yes, guys sir. see it right there in the back. Uh -oh. um, if you guys are unfamiliar, the Dub Network, we have you guys covered in all sports. All right, we got you covered in the football, but let me tell you something with, with Nate and Zay. We also have you guys on the on the baseball side, okay, with Kevin Mitch. He's going to be on the big head, okay, that's his show. All right, and we're rolling things over to what we got here. We got Ludwig, all right? Yeah, we yeah. got Ludwig, okay? Suds with Lud, Craig Ludwig, Lud, yeah. okay? We have him covered on the hockey side, okay? And then on the last one, we got basketball, Harps Court with Derek Harper, okay? Throwback. So That's my homeboy. That's your boy? Yeah, that's my homeboy from Florida. We drank the same Kool-Aid, dog. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, yeah. What flavor, though? Uh, Great. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm a red dude. Oh, man, don't red, stop with that yeah, strawberry, dude. You can't do that, all right? <laughs> Go ahead, Jose. I'm sorry. Hey. So we got you guys covered here on the Dub Network. Okay, if you guys aren't listening to us, you guys need to be listening to them. But we are here to let you guys know that we're here to stay. All right, we're going to show you guys exactly how we get down. What can you guys expect here with Let Me Tell You Something? All right, and that's something that my my guy, my, my big unk Nate dog, he always says, let me tell you something. Yeah, because let me tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> All we know how to do is keep it real. Yeah. You know, and I know we both are former Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we both do a lot of things with them still and stay engaged. But one of the things that we have always, I think, when people that people know about you and myself is we're always going to tell it how it is. Yes, it is. And uh, we're going to be respectful, uh, but we're going to be direct. And nobody ever has to guess what we're thinking. <laughs> right, right, right. So whenever y'all hear my dog Nate say, let me tell you something. Then you guys already know <laughs> <laughs> that something real is coming right behind it. Yes. Uh, but just to give you guys a little bit of background of ours, who we are, okay? We know that some people might understand who we are, former Dallas Cowboys, football players, all that, but we're a lot more than that. So I want to kind of dive back into your to the, to the history of Mr. Nate Newton. I want you to tell the people who are you, where you're from, and how, how you got going with football, because we know that's what people know you, know you for. I'm telling you. Now, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say let me, let, me, let me share something with you, okay? I'm from Florida, okay, Orlando, Florida, be exact. You know, uh, mom, dad, they they already you know land with God, but uh, I had two moms. You know what I'm saying? I had um, Gloria Marcel Newton, original mom. That's when birthing. I had Margaret Louise. Okay. Then I got my father, Nathaniel Newton Jr. You okay. know, Nathaniel Newton Senior. Sorry, Pop. I know you flipped in the grave. On that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know that's where I'm from. That's who I'm about. I got uh, what part? Of, what part of Florida? Orlando. Orlando, oh. I got a brother, Tim, played for the Minnesota Vikings. Brother Ken, who works for NASA. Oh, wow. You know, yeah, yeah. We got some brains, too, okay. along with bronze. <laughs> then I got a brother, that's uh, Tony, which will be on this show. He's a uh, director of security for the Orlando Magic. So nice. if you need some tickets, okay. I'm going to try, you know, I'm going to try to get you some right, tickets. Right. So, yeah, you threw it out yeah, there so now. I'm right. telling you, I got the fact, I got, bro, bronze and brains. And I have it. a sister, too. That works in our Orlando. So we we got it going on. The so, Newtons are entrenched, bro. So how many siblings total? One sister. Okay. Three brothers. Three brothers. All right. Yes. So it's four yes. brothers. Okay. All right. Yes. So it's five of y'all. It's five of us. Yeah. I'm the oldest brother. My sister is older than all of us, Sheila Renee. But I am the big brother. I'm the one that I'm the one that run things. You help things. My other brother, Tim, that played for the Minnesota Vikings, he's the better athlete. Okay. And he's a meaner of the two, but he give me that respect as the big brother. What's the what's the age difference between everybody? I'm 60, Sheila's 61, Tim's 59, so you know dad was doing oh, his wow. thing. Okay. You know? <laughs> bang, bang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then my other brother is 57, no, 58. And then Tony, I think, is 55, because okay. I think I'm 60. So you I'm guys 60. are all within like a six-year yeah, window. Yeah, we, yeah. Hey, hey, bang, pop, bang, 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 <laughs> bang, bang, you know? <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, so, what was dinner? What was dinner time like? Because I, I know you said you was big, bro. You ran things, but but you know what? Uh, I was skinny. Okay. I was I, I was big boned, but we were all skinny. We weren't big kids going up because my you know my mom didn't believe in that that gluttony type thing. All right. You know you got your two pieces of chicken. You know you hoping it was a breast and a short thigh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You didn't want the leg and the wing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's that's how we did it, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw this back on you. Now, you got to come up to date the way I'm at. Then we'll right. go a little further. All right. See, I want to know about you because you you sneaky. Yeah, man. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't say much. I don't <laughs> say much. Yeah. But no, I grew up in Seattle, in the Central oh, yeah. District of Seattle, back when Seattle had a hood. Right. Okay. So uh, right in the Central District, right in the heart of it, right outside of downtown. And I grew up really in uh, two separate households. So my mom was where I spent most of my time at. Right. Um, and then I would go to my dad's every other weekend because they were divorced. So right. I'm my dad's only child. 
and my mom has three. Right. And my right. mom, my mom was was getting getting down early. Mom, mom, <laughs> mom. <mom's, laughs> my mom had my older brother at right. fifteen. Right. And she had my older sister at sixteen. Right. Back to back. Then I, right. then there was a little bit of a gap there. Okay. There was a ten year gap between myself and my brother. Yeah. For real, man. Yeah. Yeah, Good, he great athlete. Yeah, uh, my brother was an athlete. Yeah, yeah my brother was an yeah. athlete. He was a big time athlete at uh, University of Oregon. He ran the one ten wow. hurdles. So wow. he, yeah, he had that go juice. Wow. Mom's was an athlete. You know, okay. she was a basketball mainly track. Right. She was the fastest in the hood. Uh, <laughs> you know, anybody want to challenge her, she was going to get down with it. Right. Uh, but you know, I grew up in a rough neighborhood. You know, if people consider a rough neighborhood, trap house across the street, drugs, alcohol, all that stuff around. Wow. Gangs. So, but now you, you, you are. You, I would, yeah, you no, don't no. betray none of that. No, bro. I got, I got, I, I try to keep my head, you know, as, as my, my college coach said, Coach <laughs> Willingham, I didn't have, I didn't just have focus. I had fine focus. Right. You right. know, I, I was really, I was really honed in on what it is I wanted to attain. And I knew at a young age what my dreams and aspirations were. And I was unwilling and unwavering in my pursuit to try to attain those things. And, oh, okay. You know, I had plenty of examples of what not to do. Right. You know, and I'm sure I'm sure you had a lot of those yeah. around the neighborhood yeah. too. You know, yeah. whether it be you know riding in the car, with moms, or she, you know, you see somebody that's 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 cracked out, and she right. said, "Hey, you know, that was so and so. He was a beast, or she was a beast." And I'm looking at them like, "There's that's the, that don't look like a beast," you <laughs> right, know, right, and right. Um, you know, or whether it be you know friends growing up, and you know either they were you know doing the wrong thing in terms of gangs or right. drugs and slanging and dealing. It's like you wow. know or whatever it might have been at that time. I knew that those things would have got me off track. So um, I just had my head on the narrow, on straight and so narrow. So you 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 were smart all the way from elementary dog. I was see, I wasn't never smart. I wasn't like school you. smart. Right, right. I wasn't book smart. Right, now, right. That, in school, yeah, it was a necessary evil. <laughs> right. You understand know what, right, what I mean? Right. So I, I had I had street smarts, and I've always had a lot of intuition. Right. I'm a, I'm a researcher by nature. Right. If I if I'm enamored by something, if I'm interested in something, I'm gonna. Why the Fine. big words, man? I mean, why you, why, why, hey, you out, why you going out on me like that? Listen, yeah. I thought we were going to keep this real. No, I'm just, just, I'm just no. enamored. What does no. that mean? I mean, no, if, if there's something I'm interested in, I'm right. going to go get it. But the school setting wasn't my thing. And I think, uh, I think now, nowadays, I think people are a lot more open to different forms of education. Yes. Versus back when we were growing up, right? Wow. You know, it, it was like either you're going to do it this way or. You, you don't go, get it. You done. don't get it done at all. You know, we're gonna hold you back or whatever it might mm. be. So now there's homeschool. Now there's different programs. Now trade you know, schools are big. The yep. tech schools are big. Yep. Wow. So, um, so yeah. So that was that was it, man. And I sports was life. You know, I, I grew up, you know, being a big fan of King Griffey Jr. I was a baseball guy, so you couldn't wow. tell me I wasn't the wow. kid. You know, Griffey was my dog. Um, Sean Kemp for basketball. You remember the Seattle SuperSonics? Yeah. So that was. See, that. I'm on the other edge. I was all Celtics. Really? And I was all How? braves because I knew Dale Murphy and uh, Hank Aaron, those guys, because of my uncle. Okay. My uncle Charles, which was my favorite uncle, he was a better. Got you. And uh, I hate to tell y'all this, but he said, ain't nobody going to bet on the Celtics, not in my hood. Not all <laughs> the white guys. So he went with the Celtics. I went with the Celtics. And I just loved the Celtics and did with Dave Cowens and all those guys like that right now. Yeah. I stayed with him, man. So who's your favorite player? Uh, for Larry Bird. Bird. Of course, bird, bro. Bird, bird, I used to think, hey, bird's the word. Yeah, bird's the word, man. And uh, I used to hate it when Magic used to get the best. I was like, wow, Magic killed my boy today. <laughs> so but bird, man. So how, so things, knowing that bird was your dude, how mm-hmm. would you compare bird, his shooting, to, to the guys that are coming up now? Uh, the same. He, uh, His shooting was second to none. It, and it's, it, I think it was just more of his mindset because – he he was a big game hunter. Like I look at Michael Jordan, you know, you may can find more pure shooters than the, uh, my guys back in the day, but you couldn't find the mindset. True. You know, like my Celtics, my Celtics, they yeah. didn't have a mindset. And yeah, uh, yeah. And, and so I'm looking at my two main guys for the Celtics today. They're not killers. Yeah. They're yeah. not killers. And, and Bird was a killer. Mikael was a killer. Cedric Maxwell was a killer. Dennis Johnson was a killer. Yeah. Dave Cowens. It goes on and on. These guys were killers, man. So, 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 st- stay right there, though, Nate, because because that's that's a real conversation to be had. Yeah. And I personally, now we we you know let me let me tell you something. We can keep it real <laughs> right. on here on on this platform. The mindset of athletes nowadays 
versus the mindset of athletes when you were coming up or even right. when I was coming up, right? Those are two different, right. two different areas within themselves. Mm. But I feel, I feel as if, even though athletes are, are further advanced, right? They're, 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 these guys now are ridiculous. They built like you. No, nah, listen, I, I am not. <laughs> they I ain't got up. that no more. They, you know, they got <laughs> it going up. on. Yeah. Look, these guys are physical specimens right. now. But I still, and I truly and wholeheartedly believe that the mentality was so much tougher back then. And the expectation of, I don't even know. I mean, just the expectation of guys in terms of their grit and their grind and, and the competitiveness was so much higher then than it is now. What, what's your, what's, what, what, do you agree on that or not yeah, so much? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. This, this, is, this is the deal. I look at guys and I literally, you've heard me say that and the guys on the other shows, we were, you know, you missed a great round table with the with the dub. The I I look at I use Tyron. Yeah. I look at Tyron Smith, and every time I see him, I'm like, yeah. how do you get to be built like this? Yeah, and look like this. And every offensive lineman, just about every offensive lineman, is similar to Tyron. Yeah. Whereas me, we were fat. We were greasy. Yeah. And, you know, we had to take greasy. Yeah, we had to make sure we take showers every day because it was a smell <laughs> thing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying to myself, look at these guys. Yeah. But they are not killers. Mm. They want to be and they try to be. And the only way you can be a killer is it got to be something within you. Yeah. It's got to be something within you saying, regardless of what my situation is, physically or mentally, I got to get out on this field because I'm the best at it. And that was Larry Bird. You know, when I remember him coming out of Indiana State, what, was it Michigan State? Yeah, Indiana, Indiana yeah, State, yeah. yeah. I remember him coming out of Indiana. He's not, he's the slowest footed. He did, 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 did. But, you know, we saw him going to Boston. Yeah. He's not this, he's not that. And then you, he get in the league. And within two years, Magic in his first year, but within two years, they, they go into the NBA Finals yeah. because of this dude who had, didn't have the greatest feet, didn't have the, uh, the quickest hands. How do we steal balls? I mean, how do yeah. yeah. So, what do you think contributes to that, though? What do you, What do you think they're it's that all with mom and daddy? Mom, okay. So it's it's all come, come mom and house. daddy. Yeah, it's all with mom and daddy because now, uh, not only do scouts and and other people see these kids at an early age, AAU, yeah, uh, where now you're a one sports star. You can't you can't dodge like you went to every sport. I yeah. did every sport, yeah. whether I do it well or not. So now you get to see a kid at an earlier age, and now everybody thinks. Oh, it's all right, baby. And it and it just goes into it, it festers. And those one percenters or half percenters that make it, they have never had to be challenged. Mm. It, yeah. The LeBrons of the world are less and less and less. LeBron had a not only he had a state, he had a he had a he had his town, his city, his state on his back. Yeah. So he had a different mentality, you know. So if you believe LeBron a killer or not, he is. You know, and I don't want to use another player because I don't know their background, but I know LeBron. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I, when I think back to to my childhood and I try to figure out, because now it's different. Now I'm trying to teach my kids how to have that dog mentality. Yeah, wow. and, it's, and it's hard. It's really hard. And I don't want to say my kids are privileged, but they're privileged. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but growing up, how I grew up with my mom, right? My mom would, yeah. she had, she was a single parent. You know, with three kids, right. uh, had to do everything herself, had to right. grind and get after it, right. working wow. two jobs, you know, we staying in the hood, leave me at home, you know, probably before I had CPS, probably should have been called back in the day. Right. But right. she said, if I call CPS, she she didn't do her job because I got to right. the phone. That's what right. mom said back in the day. But uh, moms had that grind. So I sat there and watched moms grind. My dad, right. not to say he didn't have a grind, but that's not who right. I was around every day like that. Right. And I think seeing that, I think seeing my, my grandfather working for the, the United States Postal Service for 50 right. years and not missing a day of work. Wow. For 50 years, right? S through sickness and he's everything. He's still alive? No, Pops, Pops, Pops. Pops they, right he, he, he passed away, he's still old in work day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Absolutely, wow. absolutely. So he never missed a work, day of work, 50 years. And I think having those examples, to your point, you know, the household was different. Um, and just knowing that nothing was given and you know, mm -hmm. even when you go, that's that's one community, right? That's your household community. But when you step outside of your household, you know, especially nowadays, you know, the communities are raising your kids, the, the environment that they're in, the school districts, all these things, the neighborhood that you live in, those things are what's raising your kids. Right. 
And I think back then, even though I was able to avoid a lot of the, the bad you know, avenues that I could have went down, I still I still adopted a lot of that mentality, right? right the hustlers right. mentality, you know, the wow. cast that was slain, the cast that, you know, that was, that was protecting each other, you know, brother, you're my, you're my brother, you're in my gang, you're in my whatever. I still had that mentality and that carried me forward in all my athletics. And I think, I know for myself, I had a lot of really athletic guys that I grew up around. Um, I grew up myself, Brandon, me, myself and Brandon Roy, you know, right. he, he used to play for the Chipotle and Trails wow. Blazers. We grew up together. Uh, myself, Nate Robinson, wow. um, Aaron Brooks, you know, and myself, Nate Robinson, Aaron Brooks. Matter of fact, when we were eight years old, we set a four by 100 meter state record. So that, that lets you know the type of the caliber of athletes I grew up around. In and the now, what, where you were born at? Seattle. What, Jamal Crawford, what, what, Jason Terry, what, what Corey what Dillon. What, Central what, District. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know you're special when you named a central district. Yeah, that's what you we know. do. Now, some of them cast the south end cast. <laughs> okay, okay. There was a bridge that, that separated the central uh, and the south end. Yeah, uh, he ain't crossed that. Okay. When he crossed that, there was some beef, right? So right. you had to watch yourself. But I, but going back, thinking back and saying, hey, now that I look forward, look at my kids, I'm like, how do I instill something that that's not in, innately in them, right? They, they're not in that culture. They're not in that environment. <laughs> it's literally just coming from myself and my wife, and we're trying to force this, what we grew up in, into our kids and it's not natural, you know? And I think like, you know, you grew up grinding. That's what you grew up grinding. I grew up grinding. Losing wasn't an option, right? Taking an L was not an option. Constellation prizes and ribbons weren't a thing. So now when you and your kid gets a, oh, here you go, here's a fourth place ribbon. It takes everything in me not to be like, I didn't play it. <laughs> Give I didn't me that. Yeah, I didn't play it. They, they did that one time. They gave my kid was in a karate deal. We went all the way down to Florida. This was with my first wife, Dorothy. We went all the way down to Florida. I think my son got third or fourth place or something. And his trophy was just as tall as the second place trophy. I I, I came unglued. <laughs> I said, "You better enjoy Walt Disney World because it, it, this would yeah, not over. this would not be happening again." Yeah. And I don't even know what happened to that trophy. I think myself, <laughs> "Don't bring that in my house. That's losing." You know, and uh, Darcy like, don't do that. Oh, you're hurting his confidence. Yeah, hurting his confidence. You just spent a whole lot of money down here on a participating trophy. Oh, oh. But yeah. anyway, go ahead. I'm no, no. I mean, that's that's the path, but that's the conversation that I kind of want to have because uh, I'm like, what? I'm sure people out there, you know, I'm sure you guys might have difference difference in opinions, and that's perfectly fine, right? That's what the podcast is for. But <clears throat> there's a lesson to be learned in losing. There's a lesson to be learned. You're able one lesson. Yeah. Get better. Don't lose. Yeah, don't lose. <laughs> don't lose. And if you do lose, get better. Yeah. And, you know, like, my kids right now are running track, right? They're in the middle of track. They just are all three of them. Actually, wow. They're going, all going to state for track, okay? And I'm super excited, not only because I'm seeing that genes are, <laughs> genes are real, right, but right. I'm also seeing them grow in confidence and, and understanding that you might be fast in soccer, you might be fast in another sport, but track? That's different. Track's be different now. <laughs> that tracks me different. So you get humbled, right? So I guess what I'm saying all this to say humble pie is a real thing and it's a necessary evil. So back in the day, whether you got in a fight and got scraped up or whether you played in the sports and you got beat up, right? You on the, on the, on the old line trying to toss some cats around and you come against that one, that Jerome one dog. Brown. Who is that? Jerome Brown. He's no longer with us. Philadelphia Eagles, man. Luckily, I had some whoopings. They know they how to handle to those whoopings <laughs> that he would play. And he would administer to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Not only me, everybody. What wow. happened when you went up against him? I, I had to be at my best. Yeah. I, I had to be technique sound. I had to be ready to be a mauler. I had to be, I had to get find some quickness that I know I didn't have. Yeah. You know, I had to, you know, you had to think. Yeah. You know, I call it like the, the Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, you know, where they may be weak at something, they, they played to their strength and kept you away from their weaknesses. And that's what I had to learn to do because he, this dude could do it all, man. Yeah. Jerome Brown could do it all. Bless his heart. He he was the guy that's at the Rams. I'm a 99 at the Rams. Yeah, Aaron Donald. He was that guy, but much bigger. So what yeah. was the difference in how you responded to him versus some of the other cats that he would toss around? They, they as the game go on, they get worse and worse. As the game went on, I try to get better and better. Yeah. I, I, because like you said, I, my guys who I was raised with, like the guys you, they were going to talk about you. Yeah, they were going to yeah. be like, Dog, we saw what happened. Yeah. Dog, you it's like you didn't even try. You know, no, 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 no. So I want to say, yeah, he got you that one time, or he got you that two times, but it wasn't gonna be like, man, do you remember this? Yeah, you're not getting And drugged. do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
yeah. but see our kids today like my Celtics Tatum Brown after the third game y'all went selfish y'all mm. forgot about the team aspect and you went selfish you went one on one and you destroyed the whole team you played so bad like you quit yeah. I know you was trying but this Warriors team with these veterans played y'all like a banjo bro yep and that wouldn't happen with, with us. With less, with least, yeah, less with, than they've ever had. Yes, yes. They played us like a banjo because we, people say we wasn't uh, experience ready, but you've been to the finals, not so much the NBA finals, but you've been to the conference finals. You were supposed to be ready for the next one. And you, and you had a coach that understood how you should play. Not saying that the, the, the uh, he's the GM, and I can't think of his name. Not saying that he wasn't a good coach. Yeah. But you had the perfect coach. You had the perfect situation. And you let it blow up on you. And that's because uh, you wasn't mentally tough. That's all it is. That's what it is. That's what it comes, that's what it comes down to. Come down to because yeah. you, you were the better team. Yeah. But you didn't play as a team. You went individual and it hurt you. We've both seen a lot of teams and individuals right. kind of give it up. Right? You just right. talked about the Celtics. Yeah. Right? They might have had the mentality, oh, we really want to win, but did you really mm. want to win? Like, right. it sounds good. Right. So, it, like, it, it leads me to think, do people turn it off? They like, do. They, is, it, is it a light switch? Yeah, you see it in college football. Uh, I, I didn't watch a lot of basketball this past year, but I, I watched a lot of football. And after you get up so many points, uh, things get so bad. And the reason I know this is because the next week you go play a team of equal ability, and you get up on that team and you in it to the end and you win it. Yeah. And you could have did the same thing if you'd have just gathered yourself. Kids are so much different because I promise you, it start with the mom, it start with the dad, whether you both parents, whether you're a single parent. Mm -hmm. That's how it go because they looking everybody's looking for that way out. And in this me world that we live in. And see, that's the other thing we're gonna do with Dub is we'll have not only athletes. Yep. We'll have we'll have everybody and their mom on here of different cultures, different races, different men, women. Absolutely. It don't make a difference. Your perspective, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So we want everybody's perspective. Yep. And we're fair. Yep. Even if we may not agree with your lifestyle, we are fair. Yep. You know, because first of all, I gotta look at you as a human. If I look at you as a human, then I gotta respect you as a human. Facts. Not what you do and how you do it. As long as you ain't just way out there and i'm talking about hurting people yep i'm talking about hurting people physically i'm looking over at somebody y'all i'm looking so, she, 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 i want this person to stay in here but they should have got out because i keep looking at them so if i look away that's because i'm looking at somebody i ain't gonna even call them yeah. you know what i'm saying no I, I agree with you though man and it you know i, I think the the light switch mentality i guess is what we kind of can, can refer to it yeah. as is the, the lack of mental toughness yeah it, it bothers me it really bothers me and it's not just in sports you know, as we as you know, many listeners that are out there, it this 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 converts over to the business world as well. Right? This converts to every aspect of life, right? People decide to shut it off. <laughs> and it's just, and it bothers me, man. Like yeah. if you're gonna commit your time, if you're gonna commit your energy, right? If you're gonna be in the game, right, you know what I'm saying? Like EA, if you're gonna right. be in the game, right, right, then then give it a hundred. Yeah. Give it one hundred. And if it's too hot. Get out. I've always told my wife that, that like the, the church community, mm. you know, and uh, a lot of times they would join this. And I asked, I said, do y'all start on time? Uh, is everybody all in? And they said, well, you know, no. Yeah. I tell them, they look at me like, what? You, that was too quick. If you can't start on time, mm -hmm. I can understand if you trying to start something up. Yeah. But your basic nature is to always be late. late all, yeah. See, in sports, yep. we didn't have that. No. Making it on the level that we made it on, mm. it, every minute you late with the Cowboys for us, when Jim was there, was $100. Mm -hmm. So you 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 you, you can give up $1,000 right quick being fashionably late. I'm 10 minutes late. I'm only 10 minutes late. That's $1,000. Did they change? Did they make you guys change the clocks? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, Coach Coffin, when I was in when I was right. in New York for the Super Bowl year, <laughs> right, 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 he made everybody change their clocks. Not just you. He he told you change it on your cell phone, change it on your watch, change it on. I don't care what you got on, right? He right. said change it with your clocks at home, and, and the whole facility's clocks would change because you were on his time. That's right. 
That's You're right. On his time. Come late if you want to. Yeah. And so come on time if you want to. Come on time. There's somebody who walked in, walked in the door on time. But see, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That was five hundred dollars. Yeah. We st- we started as a joke. We started as a joke, and I started like, oh man, he on time, but. We got 56 other guys here that's on time, Coach. This dude, we've we been here for three minutes. We've we been talking, Coach. This dude late. And it started as a joke. And if you showed up on time, that's where it started. 500 bucks. Mm. You late. So you know we started every meeting five to 10 minutes early. Yeah. Joe Alvazano, rest in peace, bro. Uh, and so what, what guys would do, like, man, you know what? <laughs> I might want to even show up, especially if you want a core special team guy. <laughs> this is special teams, man. If you want a core yeah. special teams guy, you you're like, you know what? I ain't going in there. They don't know I'm not there, and I ain't going in there. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it was for us, man. So now I carry that into life. Yeah. I carry that into life because uh, even when I'm dealing with Dion, Dion, I'm like, don't tell Nate 8 o'clock and you show up at 8 05 because Nate going to be looking at you. He may not talk to you for 20 minutes. Cause he over there steaming that yep. you mad. Yep. yep. Yeah. yeah. That you late, not the man. You're not mad. You late. Yeah, it's different, man. It's different. But you know what? <clears throat> I have a pet peeve, man, and I have to bring this up. I'm What's bring that? This what you got? On every on every podcast that we do on the okay. dub, I'm bringing this up. What do you think about the NCAA and all of its new rules? Uh, yeah. yeah, I got to bring that up, man, because I I. I Hate is a strong word. I dislike. dislike. Yeah, yeah. I dislike, dislike the NCAA because it's never been fair in its actions toward its so-called student athletes. Hmm. Yeah, it's never I, been. I've fair. always had a problem with the NCAA, and this is one of those topics that gets you into a heated discussion because it's not a. You can't walk both sides of the line, right? You right. can't play on both sides, and you can't sit in the gray area. The NCAA has quote unquote provided a lot of opportunities for people. Right. right. Let's get that out there. Right. Okay. Cause the first thing people are going to say, oh yeah, it provided a lot of opportunities. All right. Let's understand this. People say, people used to say, we actually had a debate. Um a Professor Black was our was one of our one of our professors at the University of Washington back right. in the day. And he would spark up these heated debates. And I never forget the heated debate on uh, one time I'm sitting in the in the front row of this big auditorium right. and we got, you know, all the regular students and then we had the athletes had to sit in the front. Right. And we're sitting down there and he wanted to spark a little something, right? He threw a little little, little burner on there. He said, uh, you know, what do you guys think about about, you know, these you guys are paying for school, right? He was talking to the regular students. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, we're paying for school. He's like, oh, what do you think about these athletes going to school for free? <laughs> Sparked it up, right? Right, right. And somebody, I'll never forget, somebody stood up and was like, yeah, this is BS. No, 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 they get to go to school. We're paying. We're going to have to go to work and we got to do this and no, no, no. And man, the, you should, everybody's head is turning around like, yeah. when everybody snapped their head around like, whoa, 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 whoa. What you mean we going to school for free? Right? And the discussion, and he just, and Dr. Professor Black just sat back and started yeah. smiling because he did what he needed to do. And it got us going because from our perspective, it wasn't free. Right? I yeah. know University of Washington was like 30 grand a year or something like that. Like, I was worth 30 grand a year as far as right. what I was providing. Right. 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 And whether it was University of Washington, whether it was USC, Arizona right. State, well, whatever school I was looking at going to, I was doing my work. I was getting, I was putting in my work, not only education wise, right, but also my time and my physical efforts to help build this brand of at that time at University of Washington. Right. Wow. So for somebody to turn around and say that I'm going to school for free, to me, it pissed me off. It pissed me off because getting my body beat up isn't free, right? And, here. and you still have to go to class. You still have to maintain a certain grade point average. And what what I what have I what have I I've always looked at is they try to be fair across the board. Mm-hmm. They they never have been fair. And then by me going to Florida and them, I could see the disparities. Yeah, you know, I could see because Florida State was right across the railroad yeah, yeah, yeah. track, so you can see it, but. At that time, I didn't know how big a part boosters played in the game. You You've know, seen it now. yeah. And so, as as we elevate this thing or evolve into a better system, which I think it, it needs a little tweaking. We, you went from a player couldn't cut a person grass in the summer. Facts. You could not have a job Facts. in the summer that connected any way yeah. directly, yeah. indirectly yeah. to your university. Yep. Uh, if somebody gave you something and say, hey, man, go go, fam or go Rattlers, all of a sudden you're on the investigation. Yep. 
you know, some people have had uh, titles, uh, accolades taken back yep. because for the same reason now you can get all this money. You 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 can do your likeness. Uh, they got to pay you a stipend. Said, and they already said they're not giving Reggie Bush his Heisman back. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the NCAA. You've always done it wrong. Yeah. You let this portal open up, not even thinking that you're going to take away 75% of high school scholarships. And then people say, what do you mean? I think Deion Sanders have signed four or five high school. This is at a historically black university signing only four or five High school. High school students. Because everybody's transferring. Yes. So you open up this portal and, not, and don't put no regulations on it. Yeah. When you should say, I think a junior, when you become a junior or senior, you should be stable. Exactly. It should be cold. You shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't be able to move. You around. shouldn't be able to move. Because now you give a high school yeah. senior a chance to come into the program. It's prematurely ending a lot of athletes' careers. Yes. It really, yes. it really is. The brilliant. 1%. It's almost worse than the NFL. Yeah. That less than 1%. That's what you're doing to the high school student. Now you're giving kids money. We, t- you know, we talked about it before we came on. Like, oh, man, now you're giving a kid $10 million. Well, I'd rather for him have that shot at that $10 million than to be walking around with nothing. Can I go find a way to get money? Thank you. Thank you. So I've never been a big fan of the NCAA. And I know the NCAA hoping it's a blow up. Yeah, of they, course. But it's not. People it's not. I, and I, and we're not going to dive all the way into it, but people need to go back and look at the history of the NCAA. You right. Look at, you know, whether or not they were paying taxes because they're a nonprofit and all these other. There's a lot of mess revolving around the right. NCAA, yeah, right? Right. right? People think NCAA, they think sports. The NCAA is its own organization. Yes. Right? That gives That's a platform right. for sports. So let's, let's move. We can get real messy in there, but players are able to get money now. Um, there's a lot of people that are going to be out there going after these young athletes. I know young athletes that call me looking right, for some right. form of advice, um, references, because they're looking for agents. They're 16 years old, 15, 16 years old looking for agents. Wow. You know, they're doing things business-wise that we didn't have to do until we walked into the Cowboys and <laughs> right. got checks. Right, right, You know, right, I, right. I didn't know what to do with that check back then. I was yeah. like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so you mean I can get out of negatives now <laughs> at the bank? Yeah. So, it's it's rough, man. I hope it all pans out. But let, let me let me yeah. stop you right there. Tell them what you do now, Isaiah. That the reason he has this knowledge because he he's talking from knowledge from experience. Tell them what you do now, man. Yeah. So now now I after after retiring from the NFL, mm-hmm. um, I got my my MBA. So I went right. back right before I finished up uh, retire. Right before I retired, I got my MBA. So that I transitioned straight into business, entrepreneurship. I right. started a personal training f- facility called Steadfast Fitness and Performance. We we're right out of Louisville, Texas. We've been rolling for nine years. Right. Uh, so myself and my business partner Jared Harrison, we've been doing that. So that was kind of my entry into outside of football, right? right? right because right, right, people right. don't people don't understand that people people look at professional athletes and like, oh, you made it, boom, so, you know, solid. Especially football guys, right. and it really should be flipped the other way because. Yes, you have an opportunity to go out there and play at the highest level. You retain your dreams, everything that you ever wanted to go do. Little Nate turned to Big Nate. Right, right. And you know, you make it. <laughs> right. and, and all of a sudden, but now you're 28 years old and you're retired. Wow. And people don't understand that at that point, all your boys, all your, all your, all your female friends that were 17, 18 years old with you going into college that knew exactly what they wanted to attain in life, they've been working in their industries for the past 10 years. Wow. Right? So now you retire and you're like, I had one goal in life. Right. And I hit it. Right. But now what? So that finding that that transition period, so people hear all those analytics and those stats and all that stuff. Oh, you know, this percentage of the former athletes, you know, end up going broke and not. It's real because of that. Right. Uh, but I luckily walked straight into a profession, did that, um, and then started serving. So I trying to find different ways to serve. So I serve. Right. On a couple of different boards, I'm on a Dallas uh, Wings Foundation board. I'm right. on a uh, Union Gospel Missions uh, board right. wow. uh, advisory. Um, I also do obviously the work with the Cowboys as an analyst and right. um, another a couple couple different you know podcasts and things of that nature. But just staying busy, man, and just 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 serving, but learning hard lessons along the way. You know, getting money taken from me, not knowing how much wow. money got took from me from financial advisors wow. and, um, you know, overcoming injuries and all kinds of stuff. Just so many life lessons 
that I personally experienced, right? And we'll, I'm sure we'll dive into that on, on, on one of the show. You got your life experiences yeah, man. That, that, that we'll dive into. Uh, but life life comes at you fast. But people people think that athletes just have this glamorous life, and it's so fake. It's not real, man. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's you know what I mean. It's just you know what, man. <laughs> I ain't glad, yeah. We got wives. Yep, and we got kids. So we not only have to deal with what the normal person has to deal with, we have to deal with that perception that we should be perfect. Facts. And so when 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 a so lot when you're of not time, perfect, it's highlighted. Yeah. But the thing about it is when I run into that girl or that guy on the street and they want to start painting this perfect picture, I this is one of the few times I tell people, I really got something to do. You know, get with you another time. I I, I see you later. Because Every responsible adult should know, regardless of what you do, you can be a high profile entrepreneur like yourself and are becoming quickly, or you can just be that everyday guy that works at McDonald's. When does the problem stop? Mm -hmm. If you got someone you have to take care of besides yourself, when does the problem stop? Yeah. And, and that that's that's what I try to get people to understand. And the normal person would not walk up to you, and I don't know, you know, I don't know about you, but with me, the normal person would never walk up to me, ever looking at me as a human. Oh. And when I asked them, "Hey, you got any kids?" <clears throat> and that's what I, yeah, I got kids. Tell me about your kids. Yeah, man, well, I don't really want to talk about that. I want to talk about football. I'm like, well, now nah, I got, I'm gonna go take care of some business about my kids, about my sister, about my brother, because yeah. I, I, I live in this real world. Yeah. And then they look at me like, wow, man. You just an everyday guy. I said, yeah, except for being a Dallas Cowboy. I am an everyday, I am an everyday yeah. guy. You know, well, I know one of the, I'm, I'm sure you get this question a lot too. People are like, well, man, how was it in the league? I'm like, it was a great job. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, man. It was a great job. You know, and yeah. like everybody has a profession. We both won Super Bowls. We did. There you go, brother. You go, you won more, <laughs> a lot more than I won though. But I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> we both won, I did something this past week where I was with Nation. Smith and they shine. It's a big offensive tackle for the Saints. Okay. And I can't think of they shine last night. He won two Super Bowls. Nice. And so when I'm looking at people, man, that thing is rare. Very much so. It's that thing is rare. Very exclusive so, club. And you know, did you did you realize you was winning Super Bowls when you were winning them? Because it took me a minute. Yeah, no. Nope. And I was very spoiled. Right, right, I was spoiled. Right, man. right. Oh yeah, uh, a quarterback and, and <laughs> no, a dog. No, no, oh, not man. Every, I'm talking about my NFL experience was yeah. not in the book. I say experience in terms of the forms of the organizations that I was able to play for. Okay, okay. right. So I got injured right my senior year of, high, uh, of college. Came into the NFL, played a new position, highest level of competition. Right, like just a fish out of water, all right. the way out of water. Right, and trying to find my way. Right. And um, had a lot of different adversities of, to face, but I did it with the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. After the Dallas Cowboys let me go, Bill Belichick called me. Right. So I was with New England Patriots. After New England Patriots let me go, I went straight home to Seattle. Wow. Right. And after Seattle, I went to go play with the New York Giants. Right. And then I found out what the real life was like, and I went to Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> right. So my first, my first, you know, five years in the league. You know, I played for four teams. I was hopping around trying to just make it through, through all these injuries. And, but I was the organization. And now I'm able to think back and be like, man, what was it that they saw in me that the great organizations wanted to grab me? Right. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, that's what I mean when I say I'm spoiled because these were the, these are top, top tier. Line, yeah. yeah, top tier organizations. I mean, even, so you won your Super Bowls with who? I won my Super Bowl with, uh, with the Giants. Wow. With my Giants. I didn't get one with the Patriots. The Patriots, we killed that season. But we got our butts kicked in the first uh, in the first round against uh, right. against you, uh, you Baltimore. Experienced a lot of playoffs, huh? I experienced a lot of playoffs, a lot of playoffs. Uh, played with a lot of great players, a lot of great you know, head coaches. Um, you know, so from that perspective, I learned a lot during my time in the league, a whole lot in terms of leadership, in terms of you know that that grind, that will to win. Right, what we started talking about at the top of the, at the top of the hour. Um, just that grind, you know, when you start spinning, I'm sure you have a laundry list of, of amazing players that you play with, yeah. but it wasn't just their skill sets that made them amazing. It was their mentality. So when I started looking back at guys that I played with, like TB12, right? Tom yeah. Brady, 
That's a different dude. It's a, it's a different dude. And I'm not talking about the physical attributes because he's not a physical specimen. Right. Right. At all. Right. But his mentality is what's make, what's creates the degrees of separation for him and why nobody has been able to match him. Now, I'm not sure if anybody will be able to match him in, the, in, in, in any time in the near future because he's just built different, man. And I think that's what's going to be a hard thing for him to trans, transitioning out of ball. Oh, no, I think he done got 300 some mil. Yeah, he's going to be all right. He's going to be, he gonna be <laughs> all right. He's going to transition. He's going to transition. Just, hey, you know, I know we got to get off this thing, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I look, I, I look around there, and and uh, I just see how blessed I am. Yeah. To be able to, you know, and Miss Julie Dobbs is the one that turned me on to Doug. Yeah. And when she first was saying that I need you to do this, at first I thought, man, I said I got a, I got a dude, man. And she thought, she thought I was talking about you doing your own show. I'm like, yeah. no, I'm talking about doing show. Partnered up. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I know we won't. Prosper until we get going, yeah. or we, we will prosper oh, yeah, once we get absolutely. going. But I'm telling you, man, uh, I've I've been so blessed to be around intelligent people. Yeah. As wild as I act, with all I've <laughs> been through, I'm serious. You know, I, I tell people all the time, Coach Johns, yep, uh, Coach Landry, Gil Brandt, yeah. you know, people, you know, Tony Wise, uh, just the list goes on and yeah. on. Then, sure. you know, Troy. Mike, uh, Charles Haley, which he played a big part in my six or seven Pro Bowls. Nice. And it's, you know, I just, I've been around smart people, yeah. man. And then, and, 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 I, and like I was telling him, I said, man, I got to get Zell. Yeah. I got to get Zell. Now, my second choice, I ain't going to call his name because he's going to be <laughs> mad at me. My second choice, I ain't going to even call his name because he kind of came up like I came yeah, up. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? For his, you know, the free agency. Yep. Even though I think I should have got drafted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you don't, you know what? I ain't even go there. I'm don't, a don't, go there. I don't even go there. I don't even go there. Yeah. We, say, we say that for another show. <laughs> yeah, we say yeah, that for yeah, another show. Yeah. No, but uh, but hey, man, we gonna we gonna we'll shut it down right there, Nate Dog. Yeah. Man, we'll get into yeah. some more stuff. Obviously, as we go forward, um, you guys check out the Dub Network. Check out the website. You guys have questions. If you guys have any kind of um, suggestions in terms of topics that you guys would like for us to address, yeah. uh, any we're gonna start bringing on guests. Yes, we're we we'll start bringing on some guests, and we're gonna get real, y'all. You know what I'm saying? You know, and whenever you guys hear Nate say. Man, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Y'all already know it's going to be real. tell you something, baby. Yes. <laughs> hey, we'll see you guys next time here on the Dub Network, all right? Y'all be good.